Welcome again, Maxim here, and in this video I will introduce you to what you can get from the various minibuses and where and how you can find them. On top of that, I will also present the basic aspects related to them. Let's start with something simple and relatively common, Stalker. How to meet him? Particularly on every mission. The exceptions are story quests, open worlds, missions on railjack and boss fights. The chance of his appearance depends on death marks that players can have on themselves. In order to receive death mark from Stalker, you must kill some bosses. After each received mark, you will also get a special information in your inbox where Stalker says your actions have consequences. From now on he can appear on most of the missions. Marks from more than one boss do not increase the chance of spawning Stalker. Just like G3, Zanuka and Syndicate Death Squadrons, Stalker appears until the 5th minute of the mission. There's a base 2% chance for his appearance, each additional marked player increases the chance by half a percent, so with full marked squad the chance is 3.5%. Stalker's appearance will be preceded by blinking on the screen and a characteristic sound. Before the attack, targeted player will additionally receive a transmission and his screen will blink a little bit harder. Plus, there will be black and red smoke. There are two versions of Stalker in-game, Regular and Shadow Stalker. Which one will appear depends on your progress with your story quests. At the beginning of the game, only Regular Stalker will come to you, but after completing the second Dream story quest, he will change in the Shadow Stalker. They have different drops. From the regular variant, you can drop blueprints for Dread, Despair, Hate and Scimitar engines. The Shadow, on the other hand, got more rewards and delicately differently distributed chances for each of them. Additional rewards are blueprints for The War, Broken War and Smoking Body Ephemera. However, there are also a few units similar to Stalker, Acolytes. You can meet them on Steel Path missions. They appear every 5 minutes on average and drop one of the many types of Arcanes and Steel Essence. Their appearance is preceded by visual effects similar to Stalker ones when he is coming to the team member, plus a special transmission from a particular acolyte. Let's move on to Ghost Strike 3. This squadron can target you after 5 played conflict missions on the side of the corpus. You do not have to play the same mission 5 times, you can play many different ones, just remember to side with the corpus. The moment of marking, as in the case of Stalker, is signaled by a message in the inbox. From now on, Gur Strike 3 can appear on non-special Grenier missions. The chances are 1.5% plus half a percent more for each team member who is also marked. However, on conflict missions the chances are higher. It remains unknown exactly how much higher they are, but it is definitely easier to meet them on conflicts. Before they arrive, you will see blinking, typical to other minibuses. But on top of that, there will be a unique transmission from Lotus and bright particles moving in circles around the players. Regardless of who is targeted, everyone will have same effects. An interesting fact. If G3 defeats you, a special item will be applied on your warframe, making it impossible to use. To get rid of it, you must build a device in the foundry that will nullify this effect. Possible drops are several rare mods, Hell's Chamber, Battle Diffusion, Split Chamber, Natural Talent, 5 to 10% chance each, depending on which G3 member you kill. Members drop different items with different drop chances. Except mods, you have 12.5% chance for Scimitar Fuselage Blueprint, the same chance for a Brack Blueprint and 25% chance each for Brack components. As far as you can have multiple Stalker death marks, one from each boss, when only one of them disappears after each of his visits, the situation with G3 looks different. After killing G3, you have to renew the marking on yourself by playing out the next conflict missions on the Corpus side. Check your markings in the profile to find out if you were the target. The second minibus from the conflicts is Zanuka Hunter. Similarly, her death mark appears after playing 5 conflict missions on the Greenier side. Chance like before, 1.5% base plus half a percent for each additional player in the team with a mark, and a higher chance on conflicts. Mark disappears after killing Zanuka, and you have to play another 5 conflicts to renew it. Screen blinking is standard at first, but yellow effects appear around the player right after. There is also silent transmission from Zanuka, and a distinctive rising sound can be heard before her final appearance. Final 
Possible drops include the Scimitar Avionics blueprint, Detron blueprint and its parts. Being captured by Zenoka also has its consequences. Your Warframe wakes up in Alat's lab and you have to get out of there, recover your weapons and escape to the Orbiter. Another miniboss is the Wolf of Saturn VI, an escapee from the Grenier prison, who uses a unique weapon, the Wolf Sledge. You can get it from him, but first things first. How to find him? Unfortunately, he doesn't appear naturally on any mission. To summon the wolf, you must use a special item from the gear wheel, a beacon. To make sure the beacon doesn't bug and works as it should, use it on the most regular mission from the navigation or on void fisher missions. Beacon summons a miniboss instantly. With beacons, you can actually summon a few minibosses. Wolf, Stalker, Jeffrey and Zanuka. Thus, by buying them from Baru or Nora, you can save the time, because you don't have to wait for them to spontaneously appear on a mission. There is also Requiem Ultimatum. It instantly summons Kuvalich or Sister of Parvos on corresponding mission, but we will leave that for some other video. So, in order to fight a wolf, the use of a dedicated beacon is required. He's a quite a tough opponent, but you can make the fight easier by using the beacon on a low-level mission. You can also use it on a steel path if you like challenges. If the wolf defeats all team members, he can disappear. However, if you defeat him, you have a chance to get some mods, a wolf slash blueprint and its parts, but also a wolf mask for the operator. On infested missions, you can randomly meet a juggernaut. After a characteristic blinking of the screen and the transmission from Lotus, you will know that there is a Juggernaut somewhere nearby. It can be attracted by the infested blood, so if you want to meet him, then kill the enemies as many and as fast as possible. Keep doing it until you hear the characteristic roar and get the second Lotus transmission. You can also temporarily stop the fight to avoid the Juggernaut. After a few moments, Lotus will inform you that she no longer detected. However, if you decide to fight him, you can either use the force method, shoot till it dies, or wait until he exposes his weak points. He receives more damage in the abdomen and in the crack on his back, which opens up during some attacks. The reward for killing Juggernaut is a blueprint for Ferleatic Pots and a chance for one of the four parts required to build them. You can use them on infested missions to focus opponents' attention on the thrown path for a while, but this item is also needed in the Jordas Precept quest. And that's basically all the mini bosses for the moment. I could also mention the dev squadrons from the Syndicate you currently have a bad relations with, but they are not any special opponents, just a few Eximus units. The size of the squadron depends on the level of negative relations with the Syndicate. These units, visually and by skills, do not differ from the counterparts that can appear on missions. However, if killed, they can drop a blueprint for their specters. So that's all in this video. Good luck fighting minibuses and dropping items from them. If you have any questions, please type them in the comment section or visit one of my streams. Link in the description. See you next time. Bye.